We use casting epoxy to create this amazing redwood table. We're going to show you in this video step by step how you can do the same thing. We started with a simple piece of redwood, we made a form, and we did a couple of pours with fancy techniques to create outstanding results. Learn right now how you can enhance any woodworking project with these epoxy techniques. Learn how to level and router your project like a pro. We're also going to demonstrate how we kept this project translucent so light will show through. We're going to do seal coats. We're going to do flood coats. We're going to show you everything in between. Stay tuned and visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Our epoxy rocks, Stone Coat Countertops. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hey guys, welcome to the Pacific Northwest. We're in a redwood grove that would blow your mind. The, the trees are huge. We're gonna show you a project with a small scrap of redwood, some casting epoxy, and some creativity. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. You got this. All right, we've got a pile of redwood. And a pile of this one. So we're gonna cut this in half, flip live edge into live edge, and create a cool finished product with casting epoxy. I love that idea. You ever done anything like this before? Never. Let's crush it, man. Let's do it. During this project, we team with a couple of YouTube channels. This is Thornton from Artist Till Death. What we're going to do now is cut this piece in half so that we can get an artistic element to the table we're creating. And do you want to do it clear or do you want to do uh, color in there? I think I want to do it maybe from dark to light. It was a blast designing this project with Thornton and Erica and really deciding how this piece was going to be set up. We're using Tyvek tape that we purchased at Home Depot to create a glossy surface so that our table will not adhere permanently to the wood that we'll pour onto. As we build the side rails to our form, we want these rails to be taller than the finished project. That way when we pour our epoxy, they won't be in danger of spilling over the edge. Because our side rails are going to come in contact with the epoxy, you want to use the Tyvek tape on these strips as well. Remember, safety first. Now what we're going to do is create pocket screws in the side rails so that they attach very quickly and easily. A Craig pocket jig makes short work of this step. We like to place screws about every six to eight inches on our side rails, so keep that in mind when pre-drilling your pocket screws. This is, so this is top side is what we're going to build off of, right? So I'll just come here. I know all I need is just a straight line to start. Following me? Picking up what I'm Picking putting up down. what you're putting down. And then just look for a bow. Okay, that's tight there. Tight there, mate. Like if there's a little bow, you just boom, push that out of here. Yeah. And now you're perfect. Boom. Boom. Guide. Act like you know all Touch. of it. Pull back. Natural. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once, get everything nice and square, and then you're ready to use 100% clear silicone and do the perimeter of your side rails. This will ensure that nothing's going to leak when you pour your epoxy. Now that we're done building our form, we're going to transfer our project into our pour room. Let's get started. Chopping it up. Take two. Mark it. So what we do now is we're going to use the quick coat on the edges of the wood. That's going to make these look really cool because they're burned. And then we're going to use the quick coat a little bit on the bottom just kind of as our adhesion to hold it down so it doesn't float. That's the only purpose of this first coat. Ready? Ready. Do you want to mix it up? Yeah. All right. We're going to mix our quick coat, our fast setting epoxy at a one to one ratio and pre-seal the edges on this redwood right now. Look at how cool that looks just getting epoxy on it. I like to apply this with my gloved hand. It's a great tool of choice. You don't waste a brush and it really brings the redwood to life and gives you a sneak preview of what your project's going to look like when it's covered in epoxy. 
I'll apply a thin coat of epoxy to the bottom of my project to hold it down to the Tyvek tape and we're ready for the next step. Guys, we got the redwood, we got the uh, form ready, we got the Tyvek tape, we got the seal coat, we're ready for the super cast. We've never used wood or a big heavy casting epoxy. Yeah. Like both of these things are new and we're ready. super excited. So the reason we like our casting epoxy is because it can go deeper further faster. You don't have to do multiple layers, multiple coats. Our original casting epoxy was a little bit slower of a process because it was one inch max. Yeah. Now we're changing that ball game and you were gravitating towards our crater lake. I love it. Why? Um, because it's so electric and it goes really well with this redwood wood. And one of our uh, subscribers, Laura Taylor, said she liked it too. So. Laura Taylor liked it. We're gonna hit it up right now. Artist Till Death, if you guys haven't met Artist Till Death yet, they're about to do wood and an epoxy table right now. It's gonna be fun, let's get started. Okay guys, it's time to mix up. We're gonna do a two to one ratio. We're gonna put A in, then B. We mix this with a paint stick. We don't wanna entrain a bunch of air because we're going so thick. We're gonna do a quarter inch, torch it, quarter inch, torch it, and bring it right up that way. We're gonna add the Crater Lake Blue. Here we go, let's do this. Our Supercast is a thin viscosity product which makes it easy to mix, easy to measure, and easy to pour. Blue layer first, blue in here, blue in here, and then put a clear layer over the top. So I'm gonna get another cup after you're mixed. We'll pour that in, we'll mix our blue and leave the rest clear. Yeah. Concur? Right. You concur? Second it. I concur. concur. You concur, all right. Concur. Dr. Resin, do you concur? <laughs> uh, I concur. You don't need this. Concur. You don't need this with casting epoxy. In fact, don't use that. Specifically don't. Look at you. Boom. If you did this with a normal epoxy, this would be, right? Because it's so much mass. If you left it in a bucket for any period of time, it's going to set up, yeah. right? This will not do that nearly as fast. You want to get it out to about three inches, but if I left this three inches deep in here, you're going to have massive working time still. So, uh, but this will still be set up tomorrow for us to continue working. But if I were to pour this thin, it's going to take forever to set up. So it's designed to be really thick. You probably are just fine, Jeff, because it's clear. And you know how when you mix the two parts, it's milky until you got them fully mixed. So good job. Okay. Now, are you going to pour that in here? No. Good job, Jeff. Got it, man. <laughs> You're lucky. Do you, you want to pre? Yes. Do you want to pre? I'm all. I am. Yeah. You would have taken that question as a direction. How much do you put in there? Um, to, to be opaque, I put a good amount, but as you know, it doesn't need a lot. To be translucent, you need to be very, very, very conservative with how much you put in there. We can always add more. It's just right there. We just put That's it our in. slogan. Okay. So hold that down there because I don't want to tilt, tip that bucket over or that. Tell me when, okay? You know what that's called? Being a bartender. It's called boxing the paint. Boxing. When you do that, they call it boxing it. Verbiage of the day, that's called boxing the epoxy. Now you're a boxer and you're getting paid to do it, so you're a professional boxer. Oh. Well, All right, so you're gonna do a thin layer on the whole thing? Okay, Chris, get in here close on this. Yeah. For the first phase of this pour, we're going to use our tinted casting epoxy. We've tinted it with our metallic powder called Crater Lake Blue. This blue is electric and it really was a home run on this project. So what we did too, when we did our quick coat on these edges, it was really fun to put a little epoxy on the bottom of this and stick it to the Tyvek tape and look at how watertight that is. It's not, it's not seeping through yes. at all. Yeah. You know what? Let's do a test. I want to see if it'll come through if you really. Our project is staying nice and tight to the bottom because we pre-applied quick coat. Boom. Yeah, there's well, not any coming through. No, it's not. See that? That's cool. So, Genius. yeah, that's a good tip on creating a form. So that would, normally I would say you couldn't do different colors here, but if you're able to fill this thing and that didn't fill up, now you've just opened a whole new artistic opportunity. Right. It's like glowing on its own. Love yeah, the, the bubbles come out really easy, especially if you go slow and then, and then torch it. So. Sorry, Chris, did I just get epoxy on the camera? Where? Okay. 
It's okay if it gets on you, just not the camera. Yeah, no. Let me torch it. <laughs> I should just know that if you're not literally right here, I'm going to get scared. I'm just going to do this just You're just to, chopping it up? Yeah, just chop it up. Ooh. Finger Chris, chop. Come here. Yeah. Look at this. Sometimes you just have to finger chop. Sounds like a modified karate chop. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So you know what's cool about this too? Is you could hide a light under this and it would boosh come right through. How is it? Boom. Backwards? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yep. 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 We're going to do some help. And honestly, that's all you need to do. It's easy, right? Easy peasy. Torch the bubbles out of your project about every quarter inch and you're ready to move on. Just hold it. Just Isn't that amazing? It's like water. Yeah. yeah. Way yes. like water. If you get really thirsty, don't drink it. Don't. What? It's not advised. By simply adding clear epoxy over the blue metallic tinted epoxy will create fun effects, keep your project translucent, and still let light come through. Yes! That's really cool. Wow. This is all clear right here. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna blend. I hope it doesn't, because that's really quite awesome. As we pour the clear epoxy, it's pushing some of the metallics out of the way. If you like, okay. get it in there. It'll ready. It'll separate. Or that. That's good. Good boosh. job. A boosh. I'm blushed out. <laughs> I'm not oh, it's coming out of the form. Psych. Oh. You know what's cool, guys, is because I already did a seal coat on this, it, it comes right off. This is like grotto-esque. like they want me to fight. Let me go get some more supercast. I just went to stone coat countertop. Oh, we got more there. What am I doing, dude? Well, I just wanted to show this, by the way. Okay, thumbnail time. Ready? Yeah. Get in here. <laughs> so <done. They're> all <laughs> Boom. You gotta do the work, B. Over the tide. Okay, let me torch it. Keep going, man. Perfect. Oh, that's sick. Nice. Nice. Yes. And like right here in the middle too, like you can see straight through. And so I kind of feel like... <laughs> See how bubbles aren't an issue in this? Yeah. Yeah. This will change. We'll let it, let it get a little time and it'll all kind of rise. We torched our casting epoxy every quarter inch. All the bubbles were released. It hardened up and we're ready for the next step. To demold our project and remove it from our form, we'll take all of our pocket screws out, we'll score the Tyvek tape, and we'll use a hammer to pop the form. We've left the form long in some areas, which serve us great in this stage of the project. We poured our casting epoxy slightly deeper than the redwood. We did this because when we come back and use our router, it'll be perfectly flush as a finished product. We glued this thing down to the Tyvek. So let's see how hard it is to get it up. I avoided the necessity of clamping my project down to my form so that it wouldn't float by using Quick Coat. This held it down nice and tight and it released even better. Nice. Woohoo. Okay. We're going to use pocket screws to hold our project in place and create rigidity. 
We're gonna use our slab jig to re-level the surface. We overfill our project with casting epoxy because we know it will slightly shrink. So we overfill it, we come back with our slab jig and we're gonna make a perfectly level surface. Typically we use a router bit that has two teeth on it. This is great when it's just wood, but when going over epoxy, it's better to use a bit with four teeth. It creates a smoother surface. I was really happy with the performance of this router bit because I didn't get any chatter marks and I got a smoother surface on the epoxy portion of this table. It reduced my eventual sanding time and it made this portion of my project stress-free. You could find this bit in our description below or by visiting us at stonecoatcountertops.com. We'll start preparing our surface for the epoxy steps by removing any router marks starting with our 50 grit metal sanding disc attached to our angle grinder. Next we'll switch to our random orbital sander. Working from low grit to high, we'll start at about 100 grit and work all the way up to 220 grit. This will create a perfect surface for starting your epoxy steps. Now that our surface is sanded, we need to get access to the edges. So we'll remove our pocket screws. We can reuse these over and over again, and it's time to get to work on our edges. We're gonna use our table saw on this portion because our table saw makes quick work of squaring everything up. Because we had this in a form, some of the epoxy will be slightly uneven on the edges. And because this is a small project, we can use our normal saw equipment to create 90 degree angles with ease. The Tyvek tape will leave small lines on the bottom of your project so you can use a 50 grit metal sanding disc to remove evidence of these lines and then go through rough sanding. It doesn't need to be perfect, it's the bottom of your project and will always finish the top surface with 220 grit. We're going to use compressed air to clean the surface of our project and we'll router the edges with a 1 quarter inch roundover bit on the top side and a 1 8 inch roundover bit on the bottom side. I really like the edge that this creates. Alright guys, we got it all ready for our first seal coat. Let's go take care of that right now. Here we go. This is awesome. Can't wait to see that final project. Hey guys, welcome to Stone Coat Countertops. Paul from Louisiana. What's up, man? Oh man, nice out here. You having fun? I'm having a great time. We've had fun all day long with projects. I like this a lot too. I want to do something translucent. I really think that's I gotta like show. Fine. I gotta show this. Show that. Show, show that. I'll bet the this, light. It's higher. gonna help a little bit higher. It's gonna, oh, oh man. Yeah. Look at that sharp stuff. So even even a little bit of light through that's gonna look really cool. I want you to squeegee this out mm. over that piece and you really got to see what this is going to do to this. You see how it just darkens it up and brings out the grain? Look at what it does to that casting. How it just... So that's another thing to keep in mind is you're going you're gonna to bring your casting back to life after you sand it. Don't worry about the scratches and that kind of thing. Yeah. That it's is just, it's huge. Man, that is incredible. <laughs> Joining us for this portion of the build is Paul from the world famous YouTube channel, Paul's huge. Toolbox. Hello. Just see it coming, coming to, to life. The black around that uh, bank is yeah, just, that's just it's, very beautiful. That's just the natural wood, you know. And that will just hit your sides and fingers. Yeah, actually, what we do with the, with this, you, we'll just you take our hands off. Yeah, you got it. Great. Look at that, brother. Is that is that crazy? And look at how clear we left it in the yeah. center there. Oh. Man. And all Please did... tell my wife this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> you guys will see that on my video if you look. I'm doing something with this tone coat like this because this is just too pretty. To, too pretty to pass up. Can you believe that, bro? Look at that. And this doesn't have to be perfect looking right now because, like right. I said, this is just a seal coat. Yep. It's going to really come to life even more when you put your flood coat on. Yes, sir. And crazy. Look at the pearl look on. That's just now it's really important on, on a project like this. Um, this is a pro tip. We sealed this twice, and the reason we sealed this is so that air doesn't come out of the side of your wood into your casting. If you if you don't do that, you're gonna get air leaching out of the side of your project. See how that soaked in that yeah. resin? Yeah. And just leave it. Let let that happen. Know. It's gonna. We, we get calls. It's blotchy. It's because it's your first it's still seal first. Coat. Yep. And you keep doing that. Sand those edges between coats to get it nice and smooth. And by your third seal coat, it's gonna lay out like this one over here. Yeah. All right. Two twenty. Yep. Two twenty. 
And we just want to knock any imperfections off the top of this. So when that float coat goes on there, it's going to go on like glass. Paul's prepared the surface for our second seal coat by sanding with 220 grit, wiping the dust, and Mitch has mixed up one ounce per square foot of our normal stone coat countertop epoxy, and Paul uses shower squeegee to apply this. That casting epoxy brings it to another level. Yep. Yeah. Use a propane torch to pop the bubbles, and your second seal coat is finished. Awesome. That is just... The blue and that redwood is a perfect marriage yeah, of colors. Yeah, beautiful. Now it's time for our third and final seal coat. Again, I'll sand with 220 grit, and we're going to use a paper towel with a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol to remove the dust. Again, we're going to mix up one ounce per square foot of our normal stone coat countertop epoxy for our third seal coat. We're going to use a shower squeegee to apply this seal coat just like before. Remember, your project doesn't need to look perfect at this point. All we're trying to accomplish is sealing this redwood so it doesn't leak air into your final flood coat. Use a propane torch to torch those bubbles out and your third coat is all wrapped up. We've finished our seal coats and now it's time for our flood coat. This is our final coat. There's a few simple steps before we can accomplish this. There's a little pinhole to address and we need to sand with 220 grit and wipe the dust and then we're ready. Let's get started. We're going to sand the surface as well as the edges of our project with 220 grit. This will create a great mechanical bond. We're going to use 91% isopropyl alcohol to remove the dust and we're ready to address the pinhole. We're going to use a burn-in stick manufactured by Mohawk. The color is dark walnut and this does well in a redwood knot. I'm going to overfill that, make sure it's all dry. We'll heat that up again with our torch and scrape it flush with a straight edge razor blade. I'll sand that repair with 220 grit. I'll wipe the dust and it's as simple as that. For our flood coat, we're going to use 3 ounces per square foot. We're going to mix this at a 1 to 1 ratio using our drill and we're going to mix it for about 2 minutes. Don't worry, when your epoxy turns a little white, that's because you're in training air. Once you pour this on your substrate and you torch it out, it will become crystal clear. Next, we'll pour our mixed stone coat countertop epoxy in the center of our project. We'll use our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel to gauge the correct amount of epoxy to leave on the surface. This is important because you won't waste any material, but you won't leave a thin amount of material that doesn't level properly. You need the right amount of material to level out like glass. Here, we're going to use our chop brush. This is going to hide any lines caused by your trowel and it also works very well by spreading the epoxy lengthwise on the edges. Next, we're going to use our propane torch to remove the air and make a crystal clear finish. We're going to do this multiple times until all the air is gone. Simply wait a few minutes between each time that you torch it and everything will clear up and your project will be complete. We turned a chunk of redwood into functional art. Visit us at StoneCoatCountertops.com to see all the products used in this video. Our epoxy rocks! Stone Coat Countertops! Hey, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> right?
Okay, we got some. Guys, we found, uh, you found, a really cool redwood spot. We did. We're on the way to the redwoods. We're getting some redwood. Get We're gonna some. do a redwood project coming up. Is it gonna be awesome? It's gonna be amazing. So awesome. Have you guys ever done a redwood project before? I've never, never done any Welcome redwood project. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. I love it. You got this. <laughs> I love all this like drippy the moss, moss stuff. Super rad. Yeah, look at this. It's just a tree. And then also a tree, and then also a tree. That is cool. It's not regular. Redwood, growing on a redwood. Welcome to the Redwoods. Won't you come into my home? This is redwood made out of redwood. I think it's truly a magical place, man. We're filming each other, man. We are. <laughs> we, have to, we have to send this back and forth, I think. <laughs> So, you're in the Redwoods, Erica. How do you feel about the Pacific Northwest? It's freezing. It's not freezing. I was so warned about it being cold and then it just wasn't. Is it pretty? It's gorgeous. Catherine, you've been literally marking the days off your calendar to meet Erica. What's up with that? How are you feeling? I'm super pumped. It's been an awesome day. You're gonna have, yeah. Did you just become best friends? We're gonna be doing parkour activities, um, nunchuck activities, yeah. kicking activities. Um, we're gonna wear Wookie masks. I think we need to be doing some porn activities. Hey ladies, earlier in the car when you were looking at your um, resin I just almost fell. additives, mm -hmm. okay, earlier in the car when you were looking at your resin additives, I noticed you were smelling them and <laughs> both of you actually got resin on your nose. I know, I'm probably still there. No, it isn't, because it was red. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, go check. I thought that was a rock over there. <laughs> it's is, a tree, is man. Is that not a rock? No, a that's rock? a tree. <laughs> Have you ever been to the Redwoods before, Erica? I haven't. This is my first time. How What's your first impression? I am small. I thought I was overweight, but now I know. This is, I'm good. I don't have to be a size two. Redwoods definitely make you feel great in perspective. Right. I feel like I've been eating salads. That's what I feel like. Redwoods That's what are a type of salad, actually. You can eat a redwood? If you eat redwood, it's a plant-based diet. Huh. Is it legal? Are these protected by like the government? These are protected. So no eating redwoods. Um, different kind of salad. I think you're allowed a certain amount of redwood bark as a citizen of the U.S. and you're good. Oh, okay. So <laughs> we all pay for this, right? Fine. Yeah, I don't know how much that'll work, but we can't eat redwood. <laughs> if necessary. If you're lost on a trail and you get really hungry, you can lick a redwood. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it, but you could like you physically could. Look at that tree. That is a skyscraper. Whoa. That is 17 skyscrapers.
Hey guys, do you want to see what happens to those logs when you throw them in your storm drain because you're littering? They come all the way to the ocean and become beautiful driftwood. So the joke's on you.